Hi, welcome to the 2016 BCVS meeting at Phoenix. I'm Joe Wu at Stanford University. Uh, I'm Melita Radisic from the University of Toronto. I'm Kevin Healy from University of California, Berkeley. So we just finished a very exciting session on IPSL, so organ, organ on the chip and uh, drug discovery uh, research. So I'm going to help uh, moderate this uh, session by asking um, uh, Melissa, what is the um, latest advance in uh, organ on the chip uh, research these days? In uh, terms of the work that is currently being done in my lab, I think one of the greatest advances that we made is we are now able to make vascularized tissues, both heart and liver, and we can feed them with perfusion flow of culture media through these uh, vessels that uh, seem like the vessels in real tissues without using pumps. So we ha don't have to pump anything. Just relying on pressure head, we can keep these tissues alive. And these tissues respond to drugs that are normally given to patients. And we also show that the heart tissue can speed up the beating rate or slow down and that the liver can also metabolize when challenged with certain drugs. Mm -hmm. Good. So, so Kevin, can you tell us some of the latest uh, exciting research that your lab is working on? Well, uh, globally, uh, where I think a real excitement is, is uh, taking uh, common biology, which is normally done in monolayer culture, and now uh, in, in enhancing that with uh, enhanced microfabrication technologies uh, that includes uh, both structural arrangement of the cells as well as uh, precision controlled fluidics to control the drug delivery. Uh, to cells and, and with the larger scope of thinking about these systems for screening, screening uh, drugs uh, in, in the preclinical pipeline um, and, and having those drugs, uh, or say the, the devices be predictive of how those drugs might behave in patients. That's sort of the ultimate mm -hmm. goal. And can you give us an example of how this uh, organ on the chip system has been used to look at uh, specific drug responses? So today we presented on the drug verapamil, which would normally give a, a basically a false positive in normal model air culture with cells derived from uh, induced pluripotent stem cells or uh, human ES cells. And in this case, uh, we could show in the chip the, the results were more predictive of large-scale animal studies as opposed to uh, dis, well, essentially cells 2D in uh, a 2D model there. Mm -hmm. And Melissa, you presented on the vascularized uh, organ on a chip model. Tell us how that's going to impact uh, the field of um, tissue engineering and the field of drug discovery, having including the component and the theory of cells? Well, I, I think one of the big excitements in the field in general is now uh, almost the first time in history we can get unlimited numbers of cardiomyocytes from human pluripotent stem cells. And your lab works with iPS cells, also Kevin's lab. So this gives us a possibility to get uh, beating heart cells from any patient, any adult, in basically a very ethically friendly manner. and. Um, so once you have these cells uh, in the heart, it's not just beating cells, there is also vasculature. And this vasculature is critical because it distributes uh, the blood and the drugs evenly through the tissue. So now that we are able to make a vascularized myocardium, this means we can apply drugs in a more physiologically relevant manner. We can have them flow through the vasculature pass through this endothelial barrier and then get into the tissue. So we are able to uh, capture more complex systems than a cell sitting in a monolayer and applying the drug on top. And I think in the future, I don't think we're still there as a field, but in a very near future, we will be able to take two different uh, organ compartments and connect them in a very meaningful way to ask very specific questions. Mm -hmm. For example, if we make a tumor on a chip and a heart on a chip and we connect them through this common vasculature, we can ask, can I find a drug that will kill tumor cells without killing the heart? And I think Kevin also has some great idea, uh, ideas and great applications with the liver yeah. and heart that maybe yeah. if you want to mention Sure, sure. Uh, just uh, taking the message a little bit further. So multi-organ systems is, is a goal for uh, some of the major initiatives in organ on a chip technology. And the, the rationale behind that is that uh, a certain organ may metabolize the drug and then you can look at off-target toxicity to another drug. So, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, another organ. So. In the case of, of uh, some of our interests, we were collaborating with, with Joe on and just starting this work, is looking how uh, uh, chemotherapy agents could uh, affect uh, patients' 
that have uh, heart disease and how we can look at better drug treatment specifically to those patients, those with uh, HCM and DCM, uh, where Joe, uh, maybe you want to explain a little bit about your, your uh, center that will produce those IPS lines that we will use in my lab uh, and then work on the chemotherapeutic screen. We have a uh, Stanford Cardiovascular Institute uh, iPSL biobank in which the goal is to make about a thousand patient specific iPS cells and these patients uh, will be normal patients and cardiovascular disease patients from anywhere ranging from long QT, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, dilated cardiomyopathy, Brugada syndrome, uh, whatever disease you name it, we're trying to recruit. And uh, the biobank also has a diverse ethnic uh, as well as sex and um, yeah, diversity and we're, this is an open share resource plan so that, so that we send the cells to other investigators to encourage them to get into this uh, IPSL field. So we're very excited about the biobank and, and we're looking forward to the collaboration on this uh, cardiotoxicity uh, uh, question. So maybe uh, to wrap up, I just want to ask uh, each one of you about how um, as, all, as both of you know, uh, the President Obama has this big uh, precision medicine initiative, which is to give the right medicine at the right time at the right dose uh, to the right patient. Uh, can each one of you just comment briefly on how you think the organ and the chip system can be used uh, for the precision medicine uh, system, um, initiative? So Kevin? Uh -huh. Sure, th thanks, Joe. So, so, you know, using cells uh, like you're providing from your biobank that, mm -hmm. you know, are uh, disease specific and there's patient history associated with those cells that we know when we uh, essentially create uh, tissue specific uh, cells like cardiac myocytes or hepatocytes used in, in uh, the heart or liver, respectively, chips. Uh, we would then have a background in which we would screen drugs and look for uh, optimal or known uh, basically drug exposure or drug responses to the specific patient. So we can certainly use the chips as a test bed to actually screen drugs for, for a specific patient. I think the technology will develop itself over the next uh, short term, two to five years, um, and then the limitation will be uh, medical reimbursement and cost of actually doing that. Mm -hmm. well, uh, I, I think with the uh, 3D tissues, we have an opportunity to try to uh, capture some more cell phenotypes that are not normally shown in 2D culture, because we have an opportunity to stress these cells and to make them, let's say, beat harder or beat faster, and uh, to see if the phenotype develops under those, those conditions. And uh, particularly in Toronto, I have a collaboration with a colleague, um, Nanta Kumar from Toronto General, who identified a family in Toronto who have very unique sodium channel mutation mm -hmm. and what he basically has been doing over the last decade is treating them in a very conservative way and the therapy is definitely not optimal mm -hmm. so we are able now to get IPS cells from them and we have the cells in monolayer and the next thing is the cells are going in a 3D mm -hmm. biowire cal culture and we'll see if we will be able to capture these uh, more uh, complicated phenotypes mm -hmm. in that way. Good. And with that, I want to thank you for your watching this video, and I look forward to seeing all of you at the 2017 BCBS meeting in Portland, Oregon. Thank you very much.